friends, welcome back to my kitchen. So I know you guys love when I share easy crock pot recipes. And today I've got two very tasty, very simple ones that I know you and your family are going to love. B and I thought these were so good. So I cannot wait to share them with you guys. So let's go ahead and jump into this first recipe. Okay, so for this first recipe, we're gonna make the Buffalo Wild Wings chicken pasta. And if you love the Olive Garden crock pot chicken recipe, you are going to love this one. I feel like it's a little less rich, has a little kick to it, but like still equally as yummy. So I'm gonna flip you around and I'm gonna take you back to the other night whenever we made this one. Okay, so for this crock pot recipe, I have all my ingredients laid out here. It's gonna be very simple and so delicious. Um, you're gonna need some chicken breast. So I have my butcher box chicken breast. I am halving this recipe, but I will leave the full one, of course, down below in my description box. And this is frozen, so I'll just let mine cook for a little bit longer. But right now it's super early in the morning, so I think we'll have plenty of time to get it cooked. And then I'm gonna use half a block of cream cheese. You guys know we don't like to use too much cream cheese and since I'm halving it, I think that'll be like the perfect amount. And then the star of the show is this Buffalo Wild Wings Parmesan Garlic Sauce. This has so much flavor and it is gonna make this dish incredible. And then you're gonna need some Parmesan and then also some milk or if you have heavy cream, whichever is fine. And then after this cooks all day, we'll add in our pasta and our broccoli. This is just gonna be so yummy. Okay, so I ended up having more chicken than I thought, so I'm really just gonna make the actual recipe. So you're gonna dump all of this sauce in here, and then you're gonna fill your container up with your milk, shake it around so you can get all of that excess out, and then dump that in here as well. Okay friends, update on this chicken. It is done. I need to stir it and shred it. Mr. B over here. Yes. Just got us some water. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then add our pasta. I wanted to do like bow tie pasta with this, but I just realized we don't have any. So we're going with the linguine. We can finish off this linguine. I know, it'll be good to finish this. And then we're gonna go ahead, um, my grocery store didn't have any fresh broccoli, so this is all I could find. So we're gonna actually steam this just to kind of give it a little bit of softness, and then we'll add that right in as well. Not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I took a little bite of the chicken. I imagine you did. And I it mean, when has, have you not? Right. But B, it has so much flavor. I feel like this is a dish you are going to love. It's really good. Okay, this chicken has been cooking for so long. It is literally fork tender. Um, and I will say that this made like a good amount of oil. It was kind of sitting on top. So I did take like a little cup and try and like skim off some of that oil. Um, but of course I can't get all of it. So I think once we get our pasta and everything in here, it won't feel that way really. So the concoction that's already in there is like the sauce for the pasta. Correct. And I have seen where people will add milk to this to kind of thin it out, which I may add a splash in here, but really the good stuff is that pasta water. So once our pasta is like finished, I'll take just a little bit of that water, add it in. So that way that sauce just like really coats those noodles. Mm. That's hard to say, coats those noodles really good and gives it like an even better consistency. Yeah. I feel like the pasta water solution is, um, it's the answer to every recipe, I think. Well, it's. I think it's better here because that, what, what we got going on in there already, if you add milk to it, that's going to yeah. be really rich. Really rich, really thick. So I think the pasta water is way better. I mean, y'all, this looks so good. It reminds me of the Olive Garden chicken pasta, which you guys know is so good. Um, but this Buffalo Wild Wing sauce just has so much flavor. Very similar to the OG yeah, for sure. concoction. However, it did taste different. This sauce has a different flavor. Okay, we're ready to rumble. Broccoli still has like a minute or so. <laughs> you want me to dump this now? Yes? No? Whatever Maybe a little bit? A little sure. drizzle? A little sure. drizzle? We don't mind a little extra. Gosh, this just oh. smells so good. 
Go ahead. Yep. Okay, so pasta is going in. Oh, luscious. Luscious. Here is our pasta water because I feel like we're definitely going to need some. I'm going to add like half and then we'll add the rest of it. Yeah, because we can, you know, we can always add more, but we can't take it out. I'll use, some, well, yeah, use your forks or your tongs. Which is forks? Let's use some tongs. Okay, use some tongs. <laughs> Which one is it? Because we can get it out with this, too. Yeah. Although this is metal. Just be careful. Okay. Oh, my gosh. I'll be gentle. Oh, yes. Did we get a, uh, the ratio correct here? Do we have the right ratio of pasta to chicken? I think so. I think we do, too. Oh, my goodness, girl. I know. I feel like there is just something about, like, pasta, like, Almost heavy pasta dishes. That's just so. How do I say it? Well, you know, we really didn't eat pasta for like. I mean, it seemed like months. For what? Whenever we were moving. Yeah. I know. I feel like I've missed it. <clears throat> like we didn't have. I mean, like all like. Ever since like before Christmas, it feels like you yeah. know. Yeah. And like a pasta hearty. Crock pot meal, I just feel like it's so cozy and homey and you know, yeah. gives you all the good feelings. Yeah, this will uh, this will get you in the right mindset on a cold winter's eve. Yes, in the so warm. the the Midwest, <laughs> what? in the Northeast, yes. where you're buried in snow. Oh my gosh! Okay, let me get the broccoli. Do it again, Daisy May. This sweet girl. Yes, oh, <laughs> someone was begging to be held. I think she wanted to be on camera and say hello to you guys. Oh. She's so sweet. Um, so will you get the broccoli out? Because now I can't. I'll try and hold the camera while I hold her, and you put the broccoli in. Sounds like a sounds like an, an excellent idea. Oh, oh, she just gave me all oh, the kisses. Oh my gosh! So straight from the oven into the the. Slow cooker. Yes. Monkey loves to call a crock pot a slow cooker. Because tell us, Monkey, a the brand a is slow, crock pot. A slow cooker. A crock pot is a brand of slow cooker. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Anyway, see, this is made by Food Network. So this is a Food Network cooker. Monkey, get the broccoli out of the oven. <laughs> oh. That looks good. Wow. We got that right on time, didn't we? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. There's there's my hand, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Parmiso? Mm -hmm. Parmiso, is that what you said? Yep, I think that means excuse me. Okay, give us a good toss. Give us another. I saved us a tiny bit of pasta water just in case we need a little bit more. Yeah, the, uh, you know, it continues to absorb but man, oh man. Okay, I'm so excited to taste it. Get in there. I made the um, perfect bite here. Oh, you did? Uh -huh. Okay. You know, it's a little spicy. You get that? There's like a little bit of heat in there. Yeah. Probably from that sauce you used. I think that sauce had like um, red pepper flakes in there. So mm. it gives it this tiny kick, but it's not like too spicy. No, it's nice. And the broccoli is really nice. It almost needs that like freshness and that crunch in there. Nice little green vegetable mixed in, you know? <laughs> yeah. I really like the linguine as the pasta. Oh, you do? Instead of uh, bow ties. But oh. It's a little bit of a... A little subtle kick in there. It's a little kick. It's not. It's not hot though. Um, you know what I do think would be good in here? What? I think some mushrooms would be a nice addition. I literally <laughs> to the grocery store and I almost bought mushrooms, and yeah. I was like, no, I'm not gonna do it. But I do think that would be really good in here. It so, really would. This is delicious. Y'all will have to make it and tell us what you think. Okay, so before we jump into this second recipe, I do want to take a quick minute and thank Butcher Box for sponsoring today's video. Y'all know we love Butcher Box. We've been getting it for quite a while now, and you really cannot beat the convenience of having high quality meat that tastes great, that you can feel good about 
delivered straight to your door. So if you don't know what Butcher Box is, let me tell you a little bit more about them. Like I said, they have the highest quality meat and truly you can taste the difference from their 100% grass fed beef, free range organic chicken, pork raised, crepe free, and wild caught seafood. But your box's subscription is super flexible. So from their different box options that you can choose from and delivery frequencies, it will absolutely fit your needs and you can cancel at any time with no penalty. But your box sources from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards of quality. And you can actually go on their website and choose which box option is best for you. We always get the custom box. That way we can kind of pick what we want to come in our box. They also have a mixed box, a beef and chicken, also a beef and pork, and then an all beef box. In our box this month, we got the ribeyes, New York strip, scallops, the chicken breast, chicken thighs, and also the baby back ribs. And we've already used our ribeyes to make Philly cheesesteaks, and they were some of the best tasting Philly cheesesteaks we've ever had. ButcherBox believes in better meals and joy together, so they are here to help us serve meals that we can feel good about to our friends and family, and it all starts with that high quality meat that we can trust. It's their mission to take the guesswork out of dinner and give us a better way to feed our families. So I'm so excited to tell y'all that ButcherBox is offering ground beef for life for all new members. So that means when you sign up, you're going to receive two pounds of grass fed ground beef in all of your boxes for the lifetime of your membership, which is awesome. So be sure y'all head down to my description box and click that link. Now let's get started on this second crock pot recipe. We're going to make chicken ranch tacos. Y'all, these are going to be so good. Okay, so I have my crock pot turned on, ready to get started on this second recipe. There's only four ingredients, so this could not be any simpler. And y'all, going to be so good. Such a good spin on your taco Tuesday. So all you're going to need is some chicken breast, one packet of ranch seasoning. You can use whatever salsa your family loves, but just a jar of salsa. Then the recipe calls for about one tablespoon of taco seasoning. My packet had just a little bit over that left. So I'm just going to throw it all in there and give it even more flavor. And that is it. This is going to cook on high for like four to five hours, or you can cook it on low all day long. And then we're going to shred this up and have some delicious tacos. Y'all, Bonky's asking me if people put green onion on their tacos. I feel like this is a very normal thing. You really don't think? In my experience, I don't think green onions have been on tacos before. What? Mm-mm. Bonky, where am I getting this from then? I think you're kind of crazy. Y'all comment below if you put green onion on your tacos. I did it for you. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking there's green onions on tacos. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'm going to roll with it. I'll do it. Okay, anyway, we've got our green onion, our cilantro. Is that good for you, cilantro? That's definitely it. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're happy with the cilantro. I mix our two little cheeses. Where's that bag? We're bringing the spice. Yes. I almost can never find this hot jalapeno in habanero. Um, it is so good. And every once in a while, I'll find it in my Walmart. So I always try and like grab it whenever I see it. But it's spicy and good and ooey gooey melty. It's just delicious. And I put some fiesta blend in there. Got our salsa, our sour cream. We need to heat up our tacos, our tortillas. Mm -hmm. And shred our chicken. Oh. This smells so good oh wow she is ready to go okay so this is tender i'm gonna go ahead and start shredding this bunky's gonna heat up our tortillas uh -huh. and then we can start assembling our tacos okay this looks perfect and i did want to tell you guys about halfway through cooking this i could tell it didn't quite have enough liquid in there so i did add a couple splashes of chicken broth and i think that it was perfect and kind of like brought everything back to life but i did take a little 
taste, of course. Mm -hmm. I have not tasted this yet. Yeah, so this will be like your monkey's first taste. I'm so excited for you to try it because it's different and so delicious. What makes it different? It has Don't the ring. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, you just stole me. I yeah, it. sorry. <laughs> um, but anyway, I think this is like a great spin on Taco Tuesday for sure, and like an easy way to do them. I go cheese next. Is that okay? Yeah, please. Build us your perfect taco. Okay, this is my this is my technique. You want to know why I go sour cream first? Tell us. Because I feel like unless well nowadays you know you have the squeezable sour cream. Uh huh. But you know, back in the day, oh. That ain't enough, Bonky. <laughs> That's plenty of cheese. Okay. Okay. Once you put everything else on there, it's difficult to get your sour cream on and spread evenly. That is very you start true. Start with sour cream, then you go cheese because next what you're doing is laying the warm protein, we'll say, because it could be ground beef, it could be chicken, could be pork, pork, could al pastor, could be steak, asada. Right. That's good. It could That's be, good. It could be a Cameroon. Ooh, Camarons. what's this? Shrimp. Oh, okay. <laughs> and that's gonna give your cheese a nice little melty it's gonna feature. Give it a, a little meltage, yeah. Yes. Or at a minimum, warm it up. Oh wow. Here we are. This looks really, really delicious. Thank you. Um, what next? <clears throat> that's well, it for me. Yeah, I'm that's done. it. That's it for you. Okay, so. go ahead with yours. Well, I guess I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go since I want to taste this without the salsa on it, just to like see what it. Um, and yeah. no green onion yet. <laughs> no, we're we're going green up. We're gonna put these on there. Yo, please tell me I'm not crazy. I I don't see how I've never seen a taco without green onion. If you do ground beef mm -hmm. and cheese and sour cream, you're telling me there's no green onion. Where am I? Where, where am I getting this from? Yeah, I think you're mixing up it, the imagery of the. So you know when we would always go to tequilas. Yeah. And I would get the little. They would bring the little cup. Yes. That's white onion and cilantro. But there's still onion. Yeah, but it's white onion. Okay. Okay, that might be where we're getting this from. <laughs> okay, yeah. try this and tell us. Either way, I mean, like, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'm gonna get this a little bit. We can go all the way through there. Sorry. Um, I'll do a couple on this end. Okay. I don't think it, I mean it's not gonna hurt anything. I right. could be completely wrong. Who knows? I think get even more flavor. Let's check it here. You like that? A little mm -hmm. char, a little Let's charge. See. I'm excited for this verdict, Bunky. I'm very impressed. You really are. I'm very impressed by it. Yep. It's delicious. It's really good. Th does a chicken have good flavor? Oh yeah. And there's I mean, you like don't even need Extra salsa? Salsa on here. I don't I don't think you do. Because you put salsa in the You're right. Drink. Yeah, I mean. Hmm. That was a side with your green onion. Oh, how's the green onion? Tell me it doesn't boost the flavor. I mean it adds to the flavor. What what may be good is um gosh there it goes jumping on the tree, man. <laughs> gosh, Bucky, I'm come serious, on. Serious these things. Some some lime juice. Oh, little lime little juice would be juice. great on there. Yeah. Give like a little brightness. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you guys, if you don't want to make um, like tacos out of this, oh wow, someone's having issues. Oh. Um, if you don't want to make tacos out of this, you could just make this and then serve it over rice, like Mexican cheesy rice. I think will be so Ooh. good. Yeah. And then you could just eat it like that too. So lots of different ways you could use that. I got a big bite. It's gonna take me a second. <laughs> yeah, we gotta learn how to like, uh, you know, when we're sampling. Mm-hmm. Have like small little taste, like on Food Network. Yeah. Mm-hmm, hang on. I agree the chicken is great. Lots of flavor, lots of ways you can use this. I love Bunky's idea for the lime. I think that would give it like a really nice, like citrus freshness. But these are really good and only four ingredients, so y'all have to try these. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here, but I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Be sure to let us know down below, do you put green onion on your taco or no? I need to know. 
Also be sure that you check out Butcher Box down below in the description box. That is such a great deal. I love you. Subscribe if you're new. Give this one a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye y'all.